What's good? This is The Review. I am your host, Noah Thomas. Today is a beautiful day. I've honestly never respected spring, so whatever spring gives to me, it's fine, you know? All right, so what do we have today? We have Ball Boys, obviously. We've also got Snob Talk, where today we are talking about Nordstrom's. We also talk about Diet Prada. Uh, we also met up with House of Pharaohs, one of the flyest groups in England right now. Um, they're super dope, but to be honest with you, all I listen to is UK rap at this point, a little bit. Gosha is apparently uh, closing down, which is sad. But he's doing something new, which is gonna be really cool. And Combs coming out with a brand new brand, an internet brand. Enjoy. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Ball Boys. We're back again, still here. I'm Ian Cervantes. I'm Kyle Hodge. We're gonna kick things off with the young 19-year-old stud, Kylian Mbappe. Yes. He was the first one to rock the Nike Mercurial Vapor 360s done up by Virgil Abloh. Mm -hmm. Virgil himself blessed up the kid with the shoes and uh, he wore them this last weekend to secure the French championship for Paris Saint-Germain. Did them justice. Yep, I mean, that league was theirs anyway, mm -hmm. everyone else is trash, but the shoes are a great thing to mark the occasion. What do you think? We've talked about them before in previous episodes. Um, I love them. I think they're a really cool shoe. They really stand out uh, on the field. Um, you know, Virgil's, he's on a win streak. He can't he can't lose, and he hasn't lost with this one yet. No. Um, maybe we'll see them some more in the World Cup, have some more players. I'd imagine he has a lot of people hitting him up, like, yo, oh, for let sure. me get these. Um, they also released some more details about the design of it. There, you notice the circles. You might be like, what were those for? The thought was actually kind of smart. It's designed to be right on the shoe where the players are supposed to hit the ball from. Um, obviously, these are pros. They don't necessarily need it, but it's cool to see the design basis. You know? Yeah, I really like how Virgil is getting very technical, like with his, you know, with these designs and like the performance behind them. It's just not like, hey, these are cool shoes. You should just flex on them. Yeah, they actually have like a, a benefit to actually playing soccer. Oh, and my favorite detail. On the bottom of the cleat, very subtle, just for a good wink, wink and a nod, says fast AF. That might be my favorite Virgil quote so oh, far. Definitely, definitely. LeBron is bringing back probably one of his biggest colorways for his signature shoe, yeah, which is the South Beach colorway. Uh, he rocked it on the LeBron 15s, even though they lost to Miami Heat. Mm, not a good look. In South Beach, kind of ironic. It's part of his LeBron watch campaign where he's bringing back a bunch of different signature colorways for his shoes. And I feel like they're not on sale, right? For anyone else? It's yeah, just for so him. the LeBron watch has just been like player edition. So in all likelihood, you're not gonna cop, which sucks because this is probably one of the most desired colorways of LeBron 15, oh, which definitely. we've seen in dozens, but this is, I mean, instantly radiates with someone yeah. who either did or especially couldn't cop the original eights. Exactly. I think this is a good marketing move by by Nike and his team because one day I think they are going to bring back the LeBron watch campaign and come back and drop all these, these colorways. And finally, we have the University of Kansas, AKA lowercase k, uppercase u. Kanye just blessed them up, the whole team with the Yeezy 500 blushes. Um, that's cool. That's really, yeah, really cool, yeah. but, but God, it, fuck Kansas. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool thing. I guess Kanye's a KU fan, who knew? That's it from us. Tell us what you think about the the Virgil pleats uh, and Kanye gifting KU some, some Yeezy 500s, like where's mine at? Um, yeah, that's it from us. Uh, catch us next week. Peace. M-I-Z. What's good? This is Noah from High Snob. This is Snob Talk. Today I'm here with Corey Stokes, fashion editor at large, and Joshua Simmons, style editor for Hearst Fashion Group. All right, so Nordstrom's is about to open up their first brick and mortar in New York City, uh, strictly a men's store. It costs $500 million. In today's market, does that make any sense? I mean, $500 million is a lot of money, but when you think of Nordstrom's and they being such a old company, they kind of have the money to spend on yeah. it. Brick and mortar isn't going anywhere. People still want to go in and touch clothes and try them on. Um, let's just see. You know, they've been working at this for a very long time, so I'm excited. Yeah, what do you think? Um, I think it's interesting. I think the presence of Nordstrom's is probably important just because you have Saks 
Bergdorf, um, sort of like the Neiman Marcus Group is coming to Hudson Yard. So I think the idea of them getting into the space is probably smart. I don't know if the idea of a men's store makes the best sense just in terms of men, the shoppers, it's um, a very sort of... You don't think men are shopping like more now I than think, ever? Yeah, but I think online and things like that. And I think that the people who can probably afford what they want to sell aren't shopping that way. So I think it may be like a disconnect between the two. Huh. Um, but I think just in terms of like presence and sort of being present in yeah. the group with the other retailers. It's that the same way you look at like fashion shows. Like yeah. The only reason he's big for right. fashion shows. So next question. Paper recently wrote an article about Diet Prada possibly saving fashion um, because, you know, they call out a lot of brands and try to keep originality in the picture. Do you guys think this fashion account can start a revolution? Um, I don't, I think, I think a revolution may be a bit of a reach. Yeah. I do, I'm a fan of the Instagram account because I think it holds um, brands responsible and accountable for sometimes very obvious, blatant, lazy copycats. I don't copycats. know, I think they're trolls. Um, I think there's times when like, sure it makes sense and I see it, but I've seen numerous times where people have called them out and they've been wrong and they, they won't take it and they still stand by what's incorrect. <clears throat> Yeah, that can be a bit like frustrating. I feel like I've seen that too. But for the most part, they are the only ones that are like holding brands accountable for like very obvious, blatant ripoffs. That's very true. And like, who's who's gonna do that if you know someone needs to do that? Yeah, I for sure. It's been a very long time. All right, next question. So James Jebbia uh, is nominated for a CFDA award. He is amongst Virgil, Tom Ford, Rap Simmons, Tom Brown. Do you think that? this makes sense or should he be getting a Lifetime Achievement Award? What do you think? I think that amongst those established people who have uh, longevity in terms of success, it makes sense. Yeah. If they put him up with sort of new designers, I'd feel differently, but I think amongst the people that he's nominated for, for me, it's okay. Yeah. I'm interested in what the description of like to be nominated for that category means because when you think of James Jebby, he's not necessarily a designer. Exactly. You know? Um, and so it seems a bit like unfair to like actual designers that are, not, you know, in that category and not to, like discredit James or Supreme or all that he's worked, you know, um, worked for, but it just seems a bit. I don't know. I think it's design. I think. It's very simple and simplistic, and it sort of is a note of what they're hitting, but I think that it's in terms of what they're offering and the way people style it and all that, there's sort of, there's there's an idea there that can be designed. It's not over-designed. He's not a designer. All right, all right, all right. And Snob talk, peace. What connects us is the fact that we are, you know, all free spirits. When you have that sort of energy around you, you know, you just feel comfortable to be able to, you know, do what you want to do in your life. Do you get what I'm saying? Being, being able to have the freedom of, you know, choice, that's what it kind of means to me when I think of the name House of Ferris, just because of what it embodies and what we do it. And being from South London, it's just like where you're from, you know, it kind of stamps like a mark on who you are to the extent. So it comes out in us and up by the way we express ourselves and the way we move, the way we speak, and everything like that. The best part of being in this collective, probably say learning off of each other, just having that relationship with like real guys, real people, you know what I mean? And just don't let nothing stop us, no negativity, no nothing, just stay close as bros as well. Keep that family kind of filter to our music and the group as well, you feel me? Talk about the shame, talk about the shame. I think when you come together as, as people, you become stronger. Do you know what I mean? And we all make each other stronger. I might see Blaze do something, and I think, you know, I could better myself just from seeing how he's done something, vice versa. <laughs>